What's doing? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest is First Class Father Tomicus Walker, who is a highly successful entrepreneur. He is married to the very beautiful and very talented Latoya Luckett of Destiny's Child fame. If you'd like to hear today's episode in its entirety, please tap the link that's down there in the description. Don't forget to smack that subscribe button. And let's go with today's interview with Tomicus Walker on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father, Tommy Kiss Walker. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, let's start right here. How many kids do you have and how old are they? How many kids I have? I have uh, two beautiful girls. Uh, one is a, uh, a one-year-old. Uh, her name is uh, Gianna Walker. And then uh, I have an a eight-year-old, which is uh, Madison Walker. And we just uh, found out we're having a baby boy uh, here in the next few months. Uh, so I'm very excited about it, man. Uh, so I have a total of three kids once uh, my little man is born uh, here in a few months. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations on that. And uh, did you do um, I know I seen you do the uh, you did the gender reveal for this one. Did you yeah. do the gender reveal for all of them or did you wait for any of them or how'd you work that out? No, I always did uh, the gender reveal for all of them. So uh, when, when we had Madison uh, several years ago, back in uh, 2012, we did the uh, gender reveal. Of course, you know, we uh we we uh, had the family and friends over at the time, but uh, now that we have the COVID virus going around right now, it's pretty tough to do it uh, for for my little man that uh, that we found out just a few months ago that it's going to be a boy. But uh, yeah, we we try to do it for all the kids, man. It is it's a uh, exciting time for us all. Uh, growing the family is always good, and uh, me finally getting my little boy is uh it's a great thing. <laughs> I've been surrounded yeah. by girls, man, so many so so much. So <laughs> to get a little man in the house, it's gonna be great. That's awesome. Yeah, I had it the reverse of you there. I had three boys first, and then we got the girl on the fourth try. So um, oh wow, we, we, okay. Yeah, we've done I, I, some of the most fun videos I ever see online are the ones where they have uh, the gender reveals. I love seeing the creativity, and uh, I, I think it's an awesome moment to share as a family. So I, I love when I get yeah. a chance to see those. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, your story sounds like mine just in terms of uh, it's three boys. Uh, I have two older brothers and also my mother finally got her last girl at the very end. So we're kind of like the same setup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, listen, if we didn't get her on four, we'd have five by now. But we got her. So uh, and she guess. runs the show over here now. <laughs> same here. Uh, uh, if you could, please just take a minute here to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Okay, so my background, man, uh, I, um, I'm uh, 39 years old. Uh, I'm an uh, entrepreneur, and also I work for uh, Corporate America as well. I've been working for a company by the name of FedEx. Uh, you, you probably know the name. I'm, uh, I'm on the corporate side of it as a uh, solutions analyst. So I've been doing that now for about 14 years. I also own my own transportation company as well uh, for the last six years. And, of course, you know I'm on the, uh, the Family and Friends uh, Family Hustle Show on uh, BH1 every Monday. Uh, with my wife and my family, uh, so we had a lot, a lot going on, a lot of moving parts. But at the same time, it allows us to uh, uh, to come together as a family, and also uh, just work together as a family as well, man. So it, it's been a, a nice journey, and uh, let's thank God for the many blessings that He have, He has given us uh, all for this uh, platform. Yeah, well said. And what what are some of the top values that you're looking to instill in your kids? Man, the number one value value is uh is is God. You know, uh, making sure they understand had that relationship with God, just like I had that same relationship. Uh, I grew up in a, uh, a single household uh, with my mom raising uh, me and my, my two older brothers. And then also uh, came along my stepfather that raised me or reared me for the last 25 years of my life. So I just want to steal those uh, family values, uh, making sure that uh, we're all close knit, make sure the family understand that, hey, we're, we're all we got, you know. And uh, just to treat people how you want to be treated, just the same principles that I've learned in the Bible, treat others how you want to be treated. So I just try to do that and I emulate that throughout my, my kids right now. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Two of the things I stress uh, quite a bit on my podcast here is one is that we have such a, um, a fatherless crisis going on in our country with yeah. so many kids growing up without a dad in their home. And then the other thing is we have God has been removed from so much of our society. And it's I think if we could just get those two things back on point, man, we'd really tighten up most of the problems we have in our country here. Man, absolutely. I, I definitely agree with that, man. God has to be at the center of all this. He has to be at the at the front and also at the end and also in the middle. So once you do away with that, man, it, it becomes chaos. So, you know, we try to pray every single day as a family. We try to eat dinner every day at a dinner table together as a family. And once my, my kids go to sleep at night, I tuck them in and make sure that we pray, you know, because 
tomorrow's never promised. And we just want to make sure that we had a closer relationship with God as we go through this uh, journey called life. Yeah, I, I'm there with you. I mean, I, there's maybe a handful of times that our family hasn't all sat down as a family and, yeah. and ate dinner together and prayed before we eat. And I think mm -hmm. the, the farther I've gotten away from God in my life, the worse things have gotten. And the closer I get back, the better things always seem to get. So uh, it, it, it's uh, always important. Now, how about as far as um, uh, discipline goes? What type of disciplinarian are you as a dad? <laughs> and is that different than the discipline style you grew up with? Man, I tell you what, man, you, you probably asked my wife this. Uh, I'm a sucker for my girls, man. They get away with everything, man. So I don't know if the uh, the role would have been reversed had I had boys first. But, uh, man, my, my girls definitely have softened me. I'm, I'm a big teddy bear. And um, as soon as they kind of they give that little baby voice and say, hey, daddy, can you give me? You know how they change their voice up and uh, w whenever they want something. But uh, as far as discipline, man, I, I put it on my wife. I mean, she, she's a, a female, of course, and uh, she knows how – uh, the uh, the behavior behaviors of uh, girls are so um, she does majority of the discipline and, and, and correcting. If I need to step up, I do. But at the most time, man, I, I got some pretty solid daughters, man. They they pay attention. They're uh, a yes sir, a no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am type of uh, little girl. So uh, as far as I, how I was raised up, man, I mean, you know, that's back in the 80s. So anything goes. Uh, the kids didn't run anything. <laughs> so if you if you're out of line, you you know, you, you'll get dealt with, uh, whether uh, being from the belt, uh, being from a switch on, on, on a tree outside or extension cord in some cases. <laughs> so, man, it was uh, it's, it's it's night and day compared how we discipline our kids today. But uh, at the same time, we try to make sure they understand the rules, make sure they understand that, hey, this is this is uh, help them understand right from wrong. You know, uh, as little kids, uh, it's, it's our job as parents to make sure that we rear them in the right way and teach them right from wrong at any given time. So uh, I, I think I do better once a little man comes around. I'm being more of a uh, disciplinarian. Uh, but at the same time, man, I'm, I'm going to put that all on my wife right now. <laughs> Yeah, good stuff. I'm right. I'm I'm 39 years old myself, and uh, okay. you know, my, my father was born in 1930, so he had me when he was 50. So he came from a whole oh, different wow. style of discipline, you know, growing oh, up. And, cool. and you know, I had my three boys first, and it has been a, a difficult transition for me, discipline wise, because I was so you know I got it pretty down with my three boys on it, and then yeah. my, it's a totally different philosophy of approach when it comes to my daughter. So I'm still it's a on the job training here with that. She's five now. <laughs> And I'm just starting yeah. to get a little bit of the hang of it. And I know there's a long way to go with it. So man, it's, 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 it's a long way to go, man. My, my eight year old runs uh, over me every day. And, <laughs> and, 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 and I can I can truly admit it. Yeah, she does. So uh, hopefully I get it down one day. Uh, but but I don't I don't see the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> when it comes to these girls at all. Yeah. And you know what? Right now we're all dealing with the um, uh, lockdown or a quarantine, yeah. shelter in place, whatever you want to call it through the coronavirus. Uh, how have you been managing that with your kids at home? How's how you guys made the adjustment? Man, it, you know, um, Alec, it, it really wasn't a big adjustment for us at all. Uh, being that uh, I, I work from home, uh, I've been working from home for the last 10 years. So uh, my office is at my home. Uh, as far as my wife, of course, uh, with her being in the uh, the industry, uh, the music industry and also uh, the, uh, the movie and television industry, uh, it's kind of difficult for her to travel right now and to uh, go on those auditions that she was going on in the past. But man, we're, we're, we're together almost 24 seven, uh, regardless if we're uh, here in, in, in Dallas or, or we at our home in Atlanta. So uh, the transition hasn't been too, too difficult, but uh, I would say us not being able to go out to our favorite restaurants is probably the, the most difficult time that we've had. Uh, Cause my wife, we try to go to dinner at least once or twice a week, just on dinner dates as a uh, husband and wife. Uh, so with us being locked in, uh, it, it, it allowed me to cook more, uh, allow my wife to cook more, uh, to get our kids involved in the cooking process as well. So, man, it's, it's, it's been lovely. And I think uh, God kind of set us down at the right time because we were moving so fast in the past, uh, going back and forth on a week to week basis from Dallas to Atlanta, from Atlanta to Dallas. So it allowed us to really that slow down and really spend that quality time as a family together now. Uh, based on the circumstance that we had before us. Yeah, I, I do think there's a lot of blessings in it because I think maybe six, seven months down the line, we're all going to be saying, hey, I kind of missed that time where, you know, things yeah. were slowed down and we had a chance to, to get together and spend all this time together. So I think part of us, maybe not right away, but I think a lot of us will miss this opportunity that we had uh, as it goes back to the hustle bustle of the real yeah. world here.
Yeah, and, yeah, we we see we see the blessings and everything, man. This is all God's doing. So I mean, we're we're, we're not gonna get mad about it. We're not gonna get sad about it. We're just gonna hey, go with the flow and and enjoy one another uh, during this journey. Yeah, hundred percent. And one one of the things I love to ask the successful entrepreneurs that I get on the podcast here is about mm-hmm. um a, a lot of the a lot of dads themselves or their older kids are buried in college debt, and it's been one of the big problems for a lot of people out there. And we see people highly successful without having to go to college. They're seeming to uh, get around that. How do you feel? Yeah. Is college necessary for kids to succeed in today's world? Uh, I mean, it, I mean, it can, it can go both ways. I mean, uh, I went to college to get my, uh, my bachelor's degree and also my master's degree. Uh, my wife, uh, she did not go to college, but she did do have, have her uh, high school diploma. So, I mean, depending on what type of industry you're trying to go into, uh, uh, in particular, if you're trying to go into the movie industry or, or, or the film or, or the music industry, if you will, a lot of times you don't really have to have a degree, but you can just uh, go to like a trade school to learn more about it. Uh, but just a uh, traditional four year. Uh, I'm sorry about that. But I'm sorry. Uh, so, but like going to just a traditional four year college, I don't personally think it necessary but i'm definitely going to push my kids to go to college for that extra you know education and and, and decide what type of field they want to go into obviously uh we we're we're in the, the television the music music industry right now and i'm pretty sure that's based on my my daughter gianna and madison they're seeing my wife latoya in the industry and been on tv and i'm pretty sure they probably want to kind of just follow the same path you know but uh, I, I, would, I would say, you know, education, it, it did me well. It opened up a lot of doors for me. Uh, once I got my master's degree, I was able to get promoted within my company. And I also, uh, I was able to uh, start another uh, company on my own, my trucking industry, as I uh, learned more about uh, supply chain management and uh, leadership management and, and really just owning your own business. So I wanted to do that for myself because I knew ultimately one day I would be owning my own business. So depending on what you want to do in life, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I know I see the benefit. I, I've, I've seen a benefit of it, but I mean, uh, to each his own, if you choose to go great, if not, it's still great. I definitely still think you'd be successful uh, regardless. Yeah. Well said. And uh, I mentioned there, like a lot of the technology and stuff like uh, the film industry right now, we're kind of in a situation where we're telling our kids to use the technology more to learn Absolutely. because they're doing the schooling at home. So it's kind of a tricky thing because normally we're trying to keep our kids. I mean, me personally, we're trying to limit the amount of screen time. Now we're trying to tell them, yeah. hey, get on the screen so you can get with your teachers and your friends and stuff. Um, how do you guys kind of monitor and handle all the technology, iPads and uh, games and all that stuff with your kids? Man, I'll tell you what, we, we, we try to get our kids uh... – uh, I mean, I, I give you a, a great example now. Every single morning that we uh, get our daughter Gianna out, out the bed upstairs, uh, the first thing she does is uh, reaches over and try to grab my cell phone because she wants to watch her favorite cartoons, kind of that start off our day. Uh, so my wife and I, we just had a talk just a few months ago and say, you know what, we can't, we got to minimize this time that we're giving these kids, just having their face buried and head down, looking at whatever on uh, Instagram or uh, on their favorite TV shows or, or, or YouTube. Uh, so we try to give them at least 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes to an hour, like realistically uh, in the morning, because, you know, as little kids, we always wanted to uh, wake up, watch uh, our favorite cartoons, Tom and Jer- Jerry, uh, you know, uh, Mickey Mouse, what, what have you. So I want to make sure that, that 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 that's highlighted in their lifetime as well, that they can go back and say, you know what, I watched my favorite show, uh, Ava and Dave or, 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 or the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse that these kids like watching today. But we, we definitely try to uh, be a, a lot more restrictive on the amount of time that they, they spend on it. But at the same time, we do give them their space to be able to, you know, kind of surf the Internet and, 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 and do different things. Uh, I know TikTok is very popular right now. So my daughter, Madison, uh, she knows every single dance move on that TikTok <laughs> uh, <laughs> platform. man. So uh, she gives us a show almost every single day. Uh, based on the TikTok videos that she sees. Uh, and, and I know that's something that she really enjoys doing, uh, dancing and singing. So I just wanted to uh, allow her to feed into what she likes in life. And, you know, maybe one day she'll be able to uh, teach classes and uh, teach other people how to dance. Yeah, awesome. And I think one of the things that's so unique, and I think it's all uh, great about the technology, is we have the ability to share these old school shows that we did draw. Like you mentioned, Tom and Jerry, I'm always having my kids watching the old Bugs Bunny and Yo Sam and Sam. Oh, yeah. and, and we get a chance to share those like on demand, like whatever we want. We could pick like a Thundercats yeah. or whatever it may be, you know. So um, 
I think it's we're in a unique position to do things like that, which is and, and you know what's funny too is now I have my 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 oldest son is 14 and it's like yeah. I never thought I'd be in a situation where you know I was always the kid that hooked up everything when we were younger yeah. like the VCRs and all this other stuff and yeah. like I always looked at my dad like man you don't know anything and now I'm asking <laughs> him, so, hey, how do I hook this up how do I get this to play you know it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it, it is, man. We're, we're getting older, man, and uh, technology is taking over. So these little kids got it down packed. I mean, Gianna, uh, she was probably about eight or nine months, and, and she knew how to turn on my iPhone, swiping her little fingers on the iPhone and then going to her favorite music. So, man, they, they learn quick. So uh, we, we, I guess uh, as parents, we just got to keep up and hopefully we can uh, continue to uh, know how to open these uh, simple apps uh, that they know how to do right now. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for YouTube for so much of it. Cause I, I lean on yeah. that to find out so many things. Um, well, well, you've had so much success here yeah. already. Uh, what's kind of, what's next for you? What kind of goals or plans do you have for yourself in the future? Man, we, we have a number of goals. Uh, my wife and I, we uh, just started two companies uh, this year. Uh, hopefully it comes to fruition uh, towards the end of this year. Uh, due to the fact that a, a lot of markets, uh, uh, in particular overseas, have shut down, a lot of our products and services that we had in place, uh, they kind of had to be on a back burner. So uh, we're we're going to be uh, coming up with those two uh, companies or uh, involving those two companies by the end of this year. Uh, also, uh, the Family and Friends uh, uh, Hustle is on right now. Uh, Friends and Family Hustle, I'm sorry, on VH1. It comes on every single Monday. Uh, we have about uh, ten more episodes left on that. Uh, is is been very successful. The ratings have been uh, off the chart. And uh, I know that's probably due to the fact that a lot of people are able to be at home on those Mondays and uh, we're not competing with NBA basketball or Monday night uh, football. So uh, God put that slot in at the right time at the right place, man. So, uh, yeah, man, we're, we're excited. Uh, business is, is great. Um, a transportation company really didn't take too much of a hit. It actually increased on this time. So that was a blessing in itself. Uh, FedEx, uh, of course, uh, we're down just a little bit uh, year over year just in terms of the volume on the different services uh, that we have in play. But, I mean, I thank God for just allowing me not to be able to be laid out, laid off or uh, furloughed like a lot of these individuals out here right now. So, uh, yeah, man, everything is great. I, I can't complain at all. Uh, my wife is doing great. Uh, she has a lot of different opportunities in her pipeline right now as well. So uh, it's just all about just, you know, uh, taking advantage of it. And when, when is the due date? When's the boy coming? Man, a few more months. We're, we're not, we're not going to say the exact date yet, but uh, in, in due time, in due time. <laughs> all right. You guys got the name all picked out already or not yet? We're kind of going back and forth. You know, uh, a lot of people keep on asking me if, he, if he's going to be a junior, but I'm like, man, my, my name, Tomic, has got butchered so much <laughs> in life. So uh, I, I'm going to not allow him to, you know, go through everything I had to go through with, with my name. But uh, he will have the same exact initials, which are uh, TJW uh, in his name. So that's that's what we have agreed on so far. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Last thing I want to hit you with here, I'd love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for the new dad or for that about-to-be father who's out there listening? Man, I tell you what, uh, for the new dads, it's, it, it's a lot different than, than, than when I became a dad, uh, even just five or, or, or ten years ago. So I, I would say, man, uh, definitely spend as much quality time with your son or daughter as possible. Uh, you're going to be the first person that they look up to to emulate as a, a, a as a man, uh, number one, and also uh, how to how to treat uh, a person uh, such as yourself being being a father in their life. I would advise them to uh, stay close to them. Uh, I know the roles have changed a little bit now. I think I read a, uh, a statistic out there that about 70 percent of the parents out there, as far as uh, parenting and, 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 and child development, are uh, kind of just been put on by the, by the fathers now because you have a lot of mothers out there working a lot more. And uh, you also have uh, stay at home dads that's actually uh, doing the rearing of, of these children. So stay close. Uh, stay committed. Uh, don't give up, you know, uh, teach them some of the, the, the principles that you were taught in the past. Treat others uh, how you want to be treated. Um, and also just, uh, you know, uh, have fun with them. You know, my, 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 my pops took me fishing a lot. We played basketball a lot. Um, he came to all of my football games. Uh, so let's make sure that you're there present in your child's life throughout their process. And, and, and yeah, man, it, it's going to be an awesome journey. Uh, you know that you have your seed, your legacy that you're uh, leaving to a lot of people and uh yeah it's going to be a, a illustration on how you you raise this child so go for it. It, it it's great 
Yeah, very well said. I love the message. This has been an honor for me. I got to say, Tommy Kiss Walker, you're a first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time on First Class Fatherhood. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed day.